Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the American Heritage School Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Specific questions for an institution or broader ones for all of our panelists are certainly both welcome. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening this evening, so certainly be sure to sign up for additional ones after this session. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available on that same website where you registered for this session in about a week's time. I'm now pleased to turn it over to our presenters and we'll get started this evening with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you very much, everyone, and good evening. So let me get my presentation started and you're able to see. My name is Adrienne Ravazzoli, and I'm Assistant Director of Admissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we actually have three campuses. We have our main flagship campus located in Daytona Beach. We also have a smaller residential campus in Prescott, Arizona, about two hours north of Phoenix. And then we have our worldwide campus, which offers online education and also education to our military service members. So our campuses are very diverse. Our Florida campus being the largest is about 7,000 students. We're an hour east of Orlando, we're about three hours north of Boca, and we are about an hour north of um, Kennedy Space Center, which is very important to a lot of our students because of the opportunities for internships as well as jobs. Our campus in Arizona, again, two hours north of Phoenix and about five hours from Southern California, so very well positioned as well for job opportunities. Our class sizes are very small. We range to about 25 to 27 students per class. Uh, we are currently social distancing. We do have in-person classes being offered. We've been doing in-person classes since the end of June last year. Uh, we are very safety conscious schools. So adding additional protocols to keep everyone safe during the pandemic has just been an additional layer that we have been doing for our students to protect you. We do have a lot of clubs and organizations to get involved with on campus. So over 200 different ones just on the Daytona campus alone. One of the most popular being the ice hockey club, believe it or not. We have a 94% placement rate, which means 94% of our students are earning jobs in their field or obtaining a graduate degree at one year of graduation. We do have a career services office on campus. And one of the things that they do is they host an industry fair twice a year to help our students obtain jobs and internships as well. The internship opportunities is what's gonna give you that real world experience that companies are looking for when they're looking to hire. This is just a quick snapshot of some recent companies that have been hiring our students, but we have students that do internships all across the country. We do have athletics for students that are interested. We're NCAA Division II at our Daytona Beach campus and we're NAIA Division II at our Prescott, Arizona campus. If you are interested in joining, you just have to send me your information and let me know what sport you participate, what, uh, what position you play, if you have any videos to submit, and I'll be happy to get that to our NCAA coordinator. We do have a lot of opportunities for student involvement on our campus. We offer study abroad at every single continent except for Antarctica. We're working on that. Um, we do also offer ROTC for students that are interested. We have all four branches represented at the Daytona Beach campus, Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Marines. And we have the Army and the Air Force at the Prescott, Arizona campus. We also offer fraternities and sororities for students to get involved with. They are community organizations that do a lot of service, volunteer work in our, in our local area. And you do have an opportunity to get internships, uh, I'm sorry, to get scholarships, as well as to gain some valuable leadership skills when you join. These are our top programs. We've been known for aeronautical science, which is our professional pilot program. We actually started out as a flight school in 1926, and we're still one of the largest and oldest flight programs in the country. We've also been highly ranked for the aerospace engineering program for the past 20 years, where we offer aeronautics, designing and building of aircraft, astronautics, designing and building of rockets and satellites, or propulsion systems. Notably, we also have a, um, a very good mechanical engineering program that I did not include in there, but we have robotics, clean energy systems, biomedical engineering, and high performance vehicles offered in that. Astronomy and astrophysics offered at our Daytona Beach campus, where we actually boast the largest university based telescope in the entire southeastern United States. Global security and intelligence and the forensic fields are offered at our Prescott, Arizona campus. Logistics and supply chain management offered through our worldwide campus online, and aerospace physiology, which is akin to astrobiology, and it is being offered at the Daytona Beach campus. It's in its third year. The application process is very simple. We don't do the common app. It's just on our own website. There is an application fee normally, but if you use that code on the screen, it'll waive the application fee, so it's completely free to apply. And then really, we only need your official high school transcripts. 
We have been a test optional school for the past six years, so we don't require test scores for admission. We do like to see at least two letters of recommendation, and then you can certainly submit an essay or resume. The better we get to know you, the better we can actually make a more holistic decision on admission. We do encourage students to fill out the FAFSA as far as financial aid goes, and we do offer merit-based scholarships based on your grades and your GPA, test scores not required. We do have internal scholarships uh, for students that may know an alumni that come up to visit our campus, participate in one of our summer camps and things like that. We do accept the ROTC scholarships. And if you participate in FIRST Robotics, VEX Robotics, Team America Rocketry Challenge, Systems Go or Cyber Patriot, we do have an additional scholarship opportunity for you there. And then we do encourage students to look for external scholarships from outside organizations. For students that are from Florida, we do accept the Bright Futures as well as Florida Prepaid. There is a grant that the state gives every resident that comes to a private school called the Florida Ease. And then we do have a special program called the Florida Golden and Diamond Eagle, which are the larger scholarships that we offer. And these are for Florida residents accepted to certain specific degree programs, which you see on the screen. If you have any questions about any of these majors, you're welcome to go on our website. And you can also reach out to me and contact me. I am your admissions counselor. With that, here's my contact information. I thank you again so much for spending some time with us tonight, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, Adrian. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to share my screen in just a moment here. My name is Mike Medina. I'm one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. I'm also joined by my colleague, Hanif Cropper. He's actually in the chat box answering questions as we go. So if anybody wants to post questions in there, he can answer them throughout the six minutes that I do have. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And this information is uh, very brief. I uh, will share a link to our, our events afterwards in case anybody wants to um, attend any other sessions. So I'm gonna just start my timer really quick here. One moment. All right, great. So I'm gonna skip this video. Uh, in, in regards to time. So in terms of who we are, we are America's first technological university. We are a research university located in the capital region of New York State, specifically in the city of Troy. Our campus population is about 8,000 students that come from all 50 states and about 60 different countries throughout the world. We have bachelor's programs, master's programs, and PhD programs. We have our five academic schools, our first one being our School of Architecture with two separate programs in there. We have our School of Engineering, our flagship school, 11 separate programs in there, aeronautical, biomedical, and chemical engineering being our most popular. And just a number of our different collaborative spaces there. And students can choose to come to RPI undeclared engineering. We have our School of Humanities, Arts, and the Social Sciences. I'll just touch on a few of these programs here. We have music, we have our brand new biotechnology and health economics program, if that's something that interests you. If you know you want to work in healthcare uh, and you have an interest in chemistry and bio, but maybe you don't want to be a physician. We have our cognitive science program in case you're interested in artificial intelligence research. We also have our electronic arts program. Our games and simulation arts program, uh, it's one of the top in the country. Uh, it's also required that you submit a, a statement when you apply to that program. The music program does require you submit a creative portfolio and the architecture program requires a creative portfolio as well. Our Lally School of Management houses two separate business programs within that. We also have a very strong entrepreneurial sense of spirit and startup culture at RPI. So if that's something that interests you, we have a number of different competitions uh, that happen across campus for you to, to do that with your, with your colleagues, but also if you want to do individual um, uh, research as well. Our School of Science is our last academic school that I'll talk about. We have a number of different programs. I will talk about uh, computer science just very briefly, knowing that it is our largest program at Rensselaer. We also have our ITWS program. It's Information Technology and Web Science. So it's kind of like computer science applied to a specific concentration. So it's smaller classes uh, than typically in the computer science program in the sense that it is the largest program. We also have our Accelerated Physician Sciences program with Albany Medical College. And this is the ITWS program. And these are the few different concentrations that you can choose to, to study within. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a, a computer science applied to the, one of these concentrations. 
In terms of research, as I mentioned when I started, we are a research university. About 70% of RPI students do complete some type of research while they are at RPI. Because we are primarily comprised of undergraduate students, you can, for most programs, you can start researching as early as your second semester freshman year. And then we get more than $100 million in research funding in any given year. Now, this is one of the things that makes Rensselaer unique. We have our Summer Arch Experience, which gives our students the opportunity to do co-ops, internships, research, study abroad, civic engagement during the summer after your, your sophomore year. So the way that the arch works is we incorporate that into our curriculum. So you take the first half of your junior year classes during the summer after your sophomore year concludes for most students. Uh, and then during the fall or the spring, you do what we call the semester away. Typically students can choose to, to do either in the fall or the spring. And, and we have a department on campus that specializes in helping students to figure out what you wanna do for that semester away and how they can make that happen for you. And there's a number of different possibilities with that. In terms of student life, we have more than 200 different clubs and organizations. Just a few pictures here. And then I won't get into the application, just knowing that uh, we are on the common application as you move forward into your senior years. I know there's a lot of juniors on the call and I will just talk about uh, the academics. So just knowing that the average uh, accepted student uh, does typically have an A or an A minus average in a challenging curriculum. I know a lot of times students have questions about GPA. We look specifically at the curriculum that you're taking as well as the, the grades that you're earning. And uh, we look to see that you have specifically uh, these seven courses, uh, something that I, we, we always touch on. Uh, so three years of science, particularly biology, chemistry, lab-based physics, and then math at least through pre-calculus although we do recommend if you can take help to do so. And we have not announced yet if we are going to move forward with test optional admission for juniors and, and lower. So in terms of financial aid, just knowing that 100% of our domestic students do receive some form of financial assistance, whether that is need-based aid or academic merit-based aid, and our, our merit scholarship, uh, the top merit scholarship is our Rensselaer Medal for $30,000 each year for, for, for the four years. And then I'll just leave that up there for you to take a quick picture of if you wanted to. A great way to stay connected with us. We are not currently open to visitors at this time, but our Instagram is a great resource for you to use. And again, we'll share, we'll, we'll share a link in the chat box with all the different um, visit opportunities that we do have virtually if you wanted more information. Thank you all for listening. Uh, and I'll also provide my email and I'm sure Hanif will provide his as well. Uh, reach out to us if you have further questions or if you'd like to set up a time to chat. Great, thank you so much. Our next presentation tonight comes to us from Wentworth Institute of Technology. Greetings from Boston, everyone. My name is Pan Luo. I am the Associate Director of International Missions here at Wentworth Institute of Technology. I'm so excited to be able to connect with you virtually tonight and present on Wentworth. So as you can see here, we're located in the heart of Boston. We are a nationally ranked university specialized degree programs in science, technology, mathematics, engineering, architecture, and design. We're mid-sized school, not too big, not too small. Very comfortable place for all of our students. Sometimes, you know, when we do feel like a big school, just because we have so much to offer, we have more than 70 clubs and organizations, lots of things, events happening here at Wentworth and in Boston. So you're probably wondering why so many students decide to apply and attend Wentworth. The answer to this is truly unlimited, but I'll just pick a few to talk about. The first thing, um, we're located again in the heart of Boston. It's truly at the hub of this global hub. So we really are a campus in the city with a quad and trees and outdoor spaces for our students to hang out. It's also very walkable. You don't need to take shuttle buses, um, you know, from class to school. Uh, from class to class, so there's really no excuses to be late for our classes. We're also surrounded by museums, sports centers, lots of fun things to do. Bunway Park is actually just um, 10 minutes away from our campus, and the Prudential Center is also just down the street. We're sandwiched between two subway stops, so it makes the city very accessible to our students, and it's very easy to navigate 
for anyone who are not familiar with the city just yet. In fact, I was an international student um, just a couple of years ago, and it was um, honestly, you know, Boston is one of my favorite cities in the entire US and in the entire world. So another thing I want to touch on is our act uh, um, as being action oriented. So no matter which program that you choose to study in, one thing that you're absolutely going to experience is the hands-on and project-based learning environment we offer here at Wentworth. In fact, we have more than 60 different lab studios on our campus for our undergraduate students. And um, I was actually talking to one of my favorite students today, Gary from Bell, uh, Bell Medical Engineering. And then he mentioned that they have actually access to 3D tissue printers. So if you want to print out a heart or print out a brain for one of your projects, you certainly have the option to do so. Here comes to my favorite slide, our co-op program. Our co-op is one of the most comprehensive in the entire nation. A co-op is basically a full-time paid position that is directly related to your field of study. Every student is required to complete two full semesters of co-op here at Wentworth, one in your junior year, one in your senior year, for the majority of our majors anyway. So through um, those two semesters, instead of taking classes, you're actually working for companies like what you see here on the slides full time while getting paid. So basically a co-op co is similar to an internship except it's full time and at Wentworth you're required to be paid in your co-op position. On average, our students make about $16,000 uh, $16, per co-op semester. And all of those co-ops can be done anywhere. A lot of our students are just basically taking advantage of us being in Boston, lots of you know, uh, job opportunities and co-op opportunities. Uh, while some of them, like my international students, they do go back to their home states or home, in, uh, home countries and then choose to explore a new country. And we have students who are doing their co-ops in Dubai, in Thailand, places like those. In terms of application requirements, it's very straightforward. We're on common application. We also have our own Wentworth application portal. We really have no preference. We basically need an application from you. We need your high school transcripts. We need one letter of recommendation and of course your essay. Uh, we do require English language proficiency if you are in international student. We take TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, and we are test optional. And we have been um, test optional for almost two years now. So the decision, decision to submit you know, test scores is entirely yours to make. So admissions only use your test score if the score is going to help your um, chances of getting admitted. But if you do not submit the test scores to us, then it does not hurt your application. We offer merit-based scholarships to all of our students and then there's no separate application for it. With that, I want to quickly share my contact information here. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Whoops, um, just give me one second. Yeah, here's my contact information. Feel free to email me and I'll be answering questions in the chat box as well. I mean, in the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. And that's a great reminder as we're about halfway through our presentations that the Q&A widget is available to ask questions specific of the institutions you're hearing from or more general ones that you'd like to hear from all of our presenters. Up next, I'm pleased to present Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Hello folks, good evening. My name is Gio Interiano. I'm one of the associate directors at Wor Worcester Polytechnic Institute or WPI, as we're known in Massachusetts, right smack dab in the middle. Uh, we are a STEM focused institution uh, where the humanities matter. So we wanna make sure that you're as well-rounded as possible by the time you do graduate from WPI. We are first and foremost, a research-based institution with the project-based curriculum. So from the small scale projects you do in the classroom to the larger scale projects you do in order to graduate, you'll always be putting that theory into practice. And then we also want to make sure you make the most out of your time with us at WPI, giving you access not only to BS programs, but master's and PhD programs as well. Um, across the board, we're known, like I said, as a STEM institution. We have 50 majors available for our students 
12 of them in engineering alone, including engineering undeclared. But we also have programs like interactive media and game design, um, computer science and data management as well. Uh, keep in mind when you get accepted into WPI, you're getting accepted into the institution, not a major. So it's okay if you come in and you start undeclared. Uh, we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. So um, we're about a medium sized school and you'll be able to grapple not only with your um, peers, but also your professors to have those dialogues about what you're learning. Um, we're unique in that we have the WPI plan and it's really uh, split up into four parts. The first is how we split up our year. Instead of having two semesters, we actually have four seven week terms. During those terms, you're taking three classes that meet every single day. So you learn everything that you will learn in a traditional semester, but we condense it into those seven weeks. There is an optional E-term for you to take advantage of online courses in particular. Uh, the second part of the WPI plan is actually how we grade students. So you technically can't fail a class at WPI. You can get one of four grades, A, B, C, or what we call a no record. And no record means just that. If you do not pass a class, it doesn't appear in your transcript. Uh, that being said, you can't and are your way through WPI. I do need you to pass classes. So if it is a major specific class, you simply retake it, but you retake it with a better understanding of what you missed the first time and a better relationship with the professor as well. Um, the third part of the WPI plan is really how we advise you. So ultimately we advise you on the tracks to take, but you get to decide what your curriculum looks like. So while we do have requirements for uh, each major, you get to choose what classes fulfill those requirements. So you can really start tailoring your academics to what your ultimate career goals are going to be. As I mentioned, we're a project-based curriculum and our IQP or interactive qualifying project that usually happens during your junior year, most likely will take you abroad. So we have sites in every continent except Antarctica as well. We say Worcester is way too cold, so we don't need to send you out there. But really this gives you an opportunity not only to work at a project center somewhere around the world, but also engage with that community and work with people from other majors to address a problem within that community. So you're putting that um, theory, again, that you're learning in the classroom into the context of real world problems. We do give a scholarship for traveling of up to $5,000 that you can use towards the global project in particular. Um, but I like to say that our students, when they graduate, know how to do three things. You know how to work on a deadline because you've been working on a seven week deadline with us for seven, uh, for four years. You know how to work with different groups of people from different backgrounds. And ultimately you have projects to show you uh, show off your work. $72,000 is our average uh, salary for our students once they graduate. And 96% of our students are employed or enrolled in a graduate program within six months of graduation. So our students are successful once they reach the field. Uh, we have five different application deadlines. I know they seem like a lot, but we have two early decision, which is the binding agreement, two early action if you wanna apply early, but you don't want the commitment. And then we have a regular decision application as well. Um, we are on the Common App, so it's really easy to apply. On the transcript, I'm going to look at you within the context of your school and how you've navigated that school. Um, but I do look for pre-calc in particular. And then I'm looking for letters of recommendation, essay, et cetera. We are truly test optional. You will still be eligible for merit scholarships if you do not submit your testing. And we've been test optional for about seven years or so. So we really do know how to read an application without the testing. And then this is what we look for when we look for students, right? So I'm looking for students who are adventurous, who want to uh, engage in the STEM, but also want to partake in the humanities, uh, students who want to collaborate with folks. All of these are averages, especially the GPA. So please take the GPA with a grain of salt in particular. I look at you again within the context of your school. But if you do want to submit testing and you're wondering where you would fall, that green box is a really good sense of what our middle 50% for our students are. And here is my contact information, folks. If you need me, I will be the counselor who's reviewing your file. So do not hesitate to, uh, to ask any questions in the Q&A, or I'll drop my email as well so you can contact me. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Our next presentation tonight comes to us from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. There you go. Make my screen larger for you guys. So hello everyone, my name is Ebony Lovett. I am a regional representative from the University of Illinois. I am um, centrally or based 
located in Atlanta, Georgia, um, but I do rec recruit in Georgia and also in Florida as well. So I am your main counselor and probably have been to your school before. So we're just gonna briefly go over some of the background of the University of Illinois. Um, the University of Illinois has about 33,000 undergraduate students. Um, so that does make us a large size university. Um, all together with our graduate students, we have about 44,000 students on campus. We are number two in diversity in the Big Ten and in the Midwest, so we pride ourselves on recruiting more minority students and international students than our peers in the Big Ten as well. We have students from all over um, the US, so all 50 states are represented, and over 113 countries are represented on campus. Um, like I said, in the Big Ten, we are known for our international population as well as just the diversity amongst our campus. Um, just to break down our student body a little bit, so um, Illinois is a in-state school, of course, so you'll see a lot of our students are from in-state, but we do welcome our out-of-state students, and so you'll see about 25% of our students are from out-of-state, and then you see our international population there. Um, again, these are numbers um, of the diversity that we have on campus. And so here you'll see our 11 academic communities that we have on campus. Um, some of you may be familiar with our most popular ones. Geese College of Business is a top 20 business school. We are a top 20 ranked public institution um, nationally. And so the Geese College of Business is one of those top 20 programs within our college that has some notable programs such as finance and accounting being um, the most well known and respected programs within our business program. And the Granger College of Engineering, of course, a lot of people who are interested in engineering and computer science know that our Granger College of Engineering um, is a top 10 program for undergraduate students with the most popular and respected programs being computer science, which is our most competitive program, mechanical engineering, um, as well as computer engineering. But we have a number of engineering programs um, to choose from if you go to Granger's College of Engineering's website. Um, and so these are, again, our 11 academic communities, and I just pointed out the top two. You can go to the link there to see all of our majors um, using our Program Explorer page. And so where is, our, um, where is the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign? Uh, we're, like it says, in Urbana-Champaign or Champaign-Urbana. We like to, we mix it up, students mix it up. It doesn't matter which one comes first, but um, we are in Urbana-Champaign, which is considered to be a college town. We are ranked as a top 10 college town. Um, that means our students love where they live at. They feel like everything they need is right within the city. Um, you don't need to go far to get everything, whereas groceries or the mall, um, being that it is a small college town. And everyone is around the same age, so you're not in a big, huge city where the, the age ranges um, are, are very are very across the span. And um, also with Urban and Champaign, um, our students love how centrally located it is. So there's a map there to show you where we're located. We're about two and a half hours south of Chicago. Um, we're two and a half hours west of Indianapolis and about two and a half hours north of St. Louis. So there's many ways to get to Urbana-Champaign. Um, you can fly into O'Hare, Chicago Airport, or like I said, Indianapolis or St. Louis. There's other airports around and then drive over to Urbana-Champaign. We also have buses that take students to and from the major airports during spring break um, or during any type of Christmas breaks if you're wondering how you would get to Urbana-Champaign. Um, and coming from the South, I am from Florida myself, from Fort Lauderdale. It is a different type of feel. Um, it is a feeling, uh, atmosphere. It's in the Midwest, so you'll see lots of corn um, around the campus, which makes um, I think Champaign Urbana a unique experience because you're just getting a different feel than Florida um, or the South itself. So student involvement, it's very easy to get involved um, on campus. We have over 1,800 clubs and organizations to choose from. So literally there's a club for anything. If you don't find a club at Illinois that you want to be a part of, you can just make one yourself. And students have made clubs themselves before. There's a squirrel watching club. I don't know why they made that club, but there's all types of clubs. We're part of the Big Ten Sports, so right now you can follow our, men, our men's basketball team. They're doing fantastic, and so we're following them. Um, all of our Big Ten sporting events are free to attend for students, except for basketball and football. Students do get to go to the Big Ten sporting events um, for basketball and football for discounted rates as a student. Um, but yes, like I said, 1,800 clubs in to choose from and Big Ten sports as well. 
And so by the numbers you can see here, um, one of the things we pride ourselves on, we are a preeminent research institution. So 68% of our student body participates in research. One of our most, um, I guess, most relevant research projects that we have worked on so far and we're pioneering is COVID testing. We develop our own COVID test for our students. Our faculty and staff came together to, to de develop a COVID test that um, requires the mouth swab. And so all of our students are being tested twice a week. Um, and we are pioneering, again, COVID testing for the uni for universities to model after. Um, and then 30% of our students are studying abroad. Um, so. We have student or we have programs in over 68 or sorry study of our programs in over 68 countries and partnerships all over the globe and then internships our students are highly sought after about 98 96 percent of our students um, have an in or a job after they graduate or they have some type of postgraduate program once they leave the University of Illinois. And this is just how we support our students, our support services, um, the Career Center being the most supportive service that you may use when you're on campus. So this is how you'll find those internships or job opportunities when you graduate or when you're ready to graduate or look for a job with Illinois. Um, the Career Center is known for mock interviews. They help students find dress, a dress code or something to wear for their interviews. Um, they look over your resume as well, and they are responsible for putting on the Career Center um, every year in the fall. And other um, support centers that I'd like to point out is the Cultural Center. Um, that is for our students who um, are from different backgrounds and really want to connect with students that are like them or that they connect with that maybe look like them or from the background they are. So we have La Casa for our Hispanic students, and that is a place for them to feel at home. Um, and Bruce Green is for our African American students. Also, um, our Asian population also has cultural centers for their support as well. And then residence halls and um, housing, we have about 35 residence halls on campus and 11, and 11 living and learning communities. I wouldn't, won't go through all of housing, but you can look at the housing options that we have on campus using the link here if you ever want to look at the housing options. And then here, this just sums up everything that I said as far as our students being highly sought after, being a top 20 um, again, employers are seeking our students once they graduate. 86 of the Fortune 100 companies came to the campus all last year to recruit our students. And these are just some of the employers that are recruiting our students. And you can go to that link, um, goillinois.edu slash Illini success to see what our students are doing after they graduate. And this just talks about the application. We won't go through that. Again, my name is Evan Lovett. If you have any questions about the University of Illinois, um, definitely you can reach out to your account counselor who probably already has my information. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ebony. Speaking of questions, we have one more presentation before we switch to the Q&A portion of the evening. So be sure to get those in using the Q&A widget. But now I'm pleased to introduce Virginia Tech. Okay, hi, I'm Steve Milley. I am also a regional representative for uh, my institution. I work for Virginia Tech, but in the Richmond, Virginia area. Um, but I do work for the main campus in Blacksburg. Uh, Virginia Tech was founded in Blacksburg, Virginia as an all male, all military college. Uh, and it's still a very important component of the university today. We're one of the six senior military institutions we're one of two schools in the country that has a military population within a larger civilian population. It's full military lifestyle, all branches are represented and great scholarship and leadership opportunities for you if you decide to do that. Blacksburg is a, is a college town. Uh, it has about 45,000 residents, but over 30,000 of those are college students. So it's a true college town and enjoys all the benefits that come with that. They have the concerts, the lecture series, the street fairs, we are in the mountains, so a lot of outdoor activities uh, that you can get involved with. Um, mountain hiking, biking, climbing. The New River is very close by. You can go kayaking or canoeing or, or just grab an inner tube on, on a um, Sunday afternoon and enjoy a lazy afternoon on the, on the river. But it is a very active campus, even though we are small. And we actually have been named one of the fittest campuses in the country. Hokie Nation is very strong. It's a very cohesive group. You know, something happens when you, when you come on campus, you do catch Hokie fever. 
And the first thing that hokey fever does to you is it causes you to go colorblind. You fall in love with everything orange and maroon. You actually think those colors go together when you become a hokey. Uh, but what's not to love? There's so much there for you to fall in love with. Um, student satisfaction is very high as evidenced by a, a poll that we're consistently ranked very high in with these students love their colleges. Our dining facilities consistently in, top, uh, in the top five in the country for quality of food. That's no small feat for the thousands of people they, eat, uh, they feed every day. There are over 900 different clubs and organizations you can get involved in. There's something for everybody. Uh, and if it's not there, you can create it. Uh, study abroad opportunities. You can go anywhere around the world. Um, and we actually have our own campus in Switzerland that you, that you could take advantage of. We do have a strong co-op program. We have one of the larger co-op programs of schools that do not mandate uh, co-op. Uh, we also have a lot of internships. Uh, we are Virginia's leading research institution and over 75% of our students will do some form, form of experiential learning before they graduate. So there is a lot going on uh, with Hokie Nation. There's a lot for you to get involved with, but that variety doesn't end with the clubs and organizations. We have a wide variety in the academic arena as well. Don't let the name tech fool you. We're not just a technical school. We are a comprehensive state university, internationally known for those high tech programs, but we have seven different colleges that encompass over 120 different majors. So there are many different things that you could take advantage of. We have everything from accounting, to water resource management. You can major in water at Virginia Tech, um, learning how to conserve the world's natural resources. Uh, but you don't have to know what you wanna study. You can come in undecided. Um, you don't have to choose a major until the end of your sophomore year, uh, but you can also narrow it down even more. If you know you want business or science or architecture, but you're unsure of the actual major you want under that college, you can apply undecided to that college and, and not have to choose the specific major until the end of your sophomore year. And, that, and that's true for every college ex except for engineering. All engineers will start out as general engineering and then choose one of the 14 concentrations um, at the end of their first year. We, we do take a holistic approach in the review process. We are looking at the entire student. We only accept the uh, coalition or the common app. Uh, the links are on our website, uh, but we have broken the process into um, uh, the holistic process into two different factors, the academic and the uh, personal. Academic is very important. Um, we are looking at the strength of your curriculum and how you've performed in that curriculum. Um, so challenge yourself and do well. Uh, test scores, we were optional this year. Um, and we're hoping that that's a policy that we're going to continue with, but we have not been given the uh, go ahead to, to uh, do that. So for juniors, please check back with us uh, about that policy uh, for when you start applying. Personal factors are very important as well. We are looking at the entire student. The only, uh, on both application platforms, you can tell us about your clubs and activities, your part-time jobs, your research opportunities. Don't shortchange yourself. Put down everything that you're, that you're involved in, that you've done. You may have something in your background that makes you look good for your chosen major, the, the, the um, career that you wanna pursue, something that the committee will talk about in, in making you more competitive for that program. Uh, we do not look at the essays for either of the application platforms, um, but we do have our own questions that we ask you. We ask you four uh, very specific questions. They're very important, so please spend some time on those. We do have three different deadlines for the um, uh, freshman admissions process, early decision binding. Um, you know you wanna to go to Virginia Tech. Early action, uh, it's not binding, but you'll hear from us sooner. And then regular decision, which is the main reason why I'm pointing these out to you. We use regular decision as a space available basis only. And, and some majors fill up at Virginia Tech. When you're applying to Virginia Tech, major is very important. Some are more competitive than others. Uh, and there might not be spots available by the time we get to regular decision. So you're giving yourself the most consideration possible if you at least apply by the early action deadline. Here's our, our total cost for in-state and out-of-state, um, room and board tuition and fees. Uh, we do have um, scholarships, uh, financial aid, you, um, the priority deadline for the, the FAFSA is uh, January 22nd. 
the absolute deadline for the general scholarship application is January 22nd. Once you apply for admission, you need to fill out the general scholarship application, which, which puts you in the running for any scholarship that you qualify for at Virginia Tech, um, except maybe the performance scholarships um, like music or athletics um, and ROTC scholarships. You need to contact those departments uh, uh, for those types of things, but don't let those deadlines pass you by. Why Virginia Tech? Um, I've already told you about the, the satisfaction rate. We, are, we Our students are very satisfied. 93% of the students return for their second year. Uh, very high uh, graduation rate. Um, over 82% of the students are, are employed within six months of graduation in their field. The Career Center works very hard to, to place you. We, um, we do have a, a Career Center that in a, in a building, a standalone building, and not just a hallway or two, like like uh, at a lot of um, institutions, but they help you right from day one. They're going to help you if you don't know what you want to do. They help you find internships or co-op positions. Um, it doesn't stop at graduation either. Once once a Hokie, always a Hokie, and they're going to help you for the rest of your life if you're if you're having jobs job search issues uh, as you're going along the process. And then our, our final slide, just um, to show you how you can contact us uh, if you would like to. Um, please follow us on Instagram or Facebook or, or um, uh, fa uh, our Twitter. You can contact me as well, um, or you can find out the, the Florida counselor as well. But we all can, are, are welcome to help you. Great, thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. At this point, we'll bring back all of our presenters um, as we have time for, for Q&A. And if you have any questions specifically for institutions, certainly feel free to, to drop those in the Q&A widget. And um, I'm sure our panelists would be happy to, to kind of individually answer those. But to get things started, I think one thing that oftentimes um, students are, are curious about is what a favorite kind of event or tradition is on your campus, something that they should look out for. And we can go in the same order as the initial presentations. All right, so on Emory Riddle's campus, um, we do have a lot of traditions because we are a smaller school. Students have a very family-centered atmosphere on campus. Um, one of the things that we have on campus is actually called Spirit Rock, where students are invited to paint um, the rock according to a you know, movement or some kind of club they want to highlight or something that they want other students to know about or get involved with. So we've had very creative expressions on that rock. Um, one of my favorite, because I actually went to school in South America, was when there was a um, an earthquake in Ecuador a few years back. The students actually all gathered together from different groups and organizations and they painted the Ecuadorian flag on the rock. So that was really cool to see. Um, our students get really involved with all sorts of activities on campus. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, the ice hockey team is extremely popular, but not just to play. Students love going to the ice hockey games. Um, the rink that's about two blocks from campus offers a lot of food specials for students that come up, and it really is just a fun atmosphere. The same with the rest of our sports games. You wouldn't think that a technological, a STEM university would be so involved in their sports, but our students are way behind their um, their athletic eagle teams. So we have an excellent soccer team. We have basketball games that students love to go see. Um, lacrosse team is really popular. So that engages students, faculty, and staff. We're all involved. We're all together, always joining in these different events. I would say my favorite Rensselaer tradition is Hockey Line. Um, so with Hockey Line, it's where students line up to get their seasonal tickets to go to the games. We have Division One ice hockey on our campus, so it's a great uh, way to, you know, get out there and support your your friends on campus. It's there are widely most widely attended spectator events. Well, here at Woolworth, there are a lot of events that I particularly really enjoy. I am a foodie, um, so the for me, um, to me, I think like the most favorite one is the welcome barbecue that we have in the fall. Um, so basically, you know, like students, faculty members, and, uh, you know, like our staff members that are, were all gathered on the quad and they have barbecue free ice cream with our students and also neighboring college students. We're part of the Colleges of Fenway Consortium. So it's basically like a five college consortium where our students are able to, you know, 
join um, their clubs, their organizations, things like that. So there are a lot of fun things to do here at Wentworth. Uh, my favorite tradition at WPI actually happens twice or rather one during two very specific times in your life. The first is when you first come onto campus for new student orientation. We have an Earl Bridge on campus, which is a pretty uh, prominent fixture. And essentially new students cross the bridge on uh, coming onto campus, but lining the bridge is faculty, staff, students, cheering, joining you into the community. So you see the community that you're coming in. And the second time that you cross the bridge is the other way towards graduation as you're walking into the quad towards the bridge to be, or rather towards the stage so you can graduate. And again, lining that bridge is all the faculty, friends and staff that cheered you on for the four years. So it's a really nice bookend from the start to WPI to the end of WPI. Is it my, I forget the order, is it my turn, sorry. Um, with the University of Illinois, I would say our um, our biggest tradition, I will guess would be Alma, if you have ever seen the Alma statue on our campus. Um, it's, we call her Alma's Alma Mata, but students go there um, in their roles when they graduate, or they go there on the first day of class to take a picture, and on the last day when they graduate, um, she's kind of a staple when you come visit the campus, you get a tour around her, you'll see her around campus. Um, they also dress her up during different holidays, Christmas, she's wearing some kind of outfit. Um, students just like to put clothes on the statue, so I would say that's our biggest tradition at the university. I think my favorite tradition, uh, well, it was when I was a student, at least, is the annual snowball fight. The, the first significant snowfall of the year, there's a snowball fight between the upper quad and the lower quad. Upper quad is comprised mainly of the Corps cadets, and it's smaller, but those guys know the strategy, so they usually fare a little better than, than the lower quad, but that, that, it is a lot of fun uh, when you're there, no matter what side you're on. <laughs> Great. Thank you all for sharing those traditions and events with us and as well as your initial presentations. Also, thank you to all the students for joining us. When this webinar ends, there will be a link to a quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being have offered as part of this fair. So be sure to sign up for one in the next slot. And on that same website where you registered for this one in about a week's time, there will be a recording of all sessions. Thanks so much. Have a great night.